The Baggies Podcast, giving you the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion. Now available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Hello and welcome to The Baggies Podcast for another episode today. Talking all things Albion, Liverpool, a 2-1 defeat. In the most unlikely of circumstances, Alisson, Liverpool's number one, the goalkeeper, scored for Liverpool against West Brom to win the game from a corner as well. So we'll be discussing all of that game. We'll be going into detail, giving you man of the matches, all sorts, and giving your thoughts on it as well. But yeah, we're already down, but still played with a lot of pride today. But we'll be talking more about that in today's episode. But if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe, follow us on your podcast platform, and make sure you're following us on Twitter at the Baggies Pod or at Louis Bent underscore on Twitter. Either of those is fine. The links will be in the description to the podcast. Make sure you follow in and you're liking the episode. If you've enjoyed, leave us a review. If you've got that option on your podcast platform, that'll be awesome as well. And you can get involved in future episodes as well via our Twitter page. But yeah, an Albion Liverpool match reaction. I mean, last time it was a relegation reaction, but this time. It's a bit of an unusual one, but let's get, without further ado, let's get straight into this. What a strange, strange fixture. I mean, we can start with the beginning of the game with the lineup. I mean, we made a few changes, Big Sam made a few changes, but before that, we'll go on to talk about what happened in midweek. We had an under 18s. I mean, that was the same midweek, it was yesterday. Uh, no, Friday. We had midweek, uh, well, Friday night, uh, under 18s action, where the lads from. Uh, the Albion under-18s unfortunately lost to Villa in the FA Youth Cup. I think that was the semi-final, if I'm right in thinking. Unfortunately, a loss there. But the positive thing is for those who want Big Sam to stay in as manager, that Big Sam and Sa- Little Sam, Tammy Lee and uh, Luke Dowling were all at the game, all assessing the players. So that sort of, if if you are a Big Sam in person, then you sort of you might look for that with a bit of positivity because why would you want to go to an under 18s game if you've got no plans on ever going near the under 18 football team because you're not going to be the manager of the club if you're a big sam fan then that's probably a good little sign for you guys and a big uh, well I'll say it's you guys I I'm probably in with you as well but you know it's probably a good sign if you are f- fancy and big sam to stay then yeah big sam looked to be very interested in the under 18s with Sammy Lee so yeah, definitely for that one, uh, yeah, d- decent. But um, unfortunate in terms of the result, I think it was 4-1 in the end, but we ended up losing to goals from two uh, former West Bromwich Albion Academy pro- uh, pro- pro- project pro- prospects or whatever whatever you say. I mean, it was a bit a bit odd that we've managed to strip the entire academy down and, and, give, it to Li- and give it to Liverpool in the end. But yeah, I think... Um, a lot of the time, I think Villa were better than us in that game. Uh, Louis Barry scored in that particular game as well. So, yeah, Louis Barry scored one of the goals. I'm going to see if I can find the name of the other goal scorer. But, yeah, there were two West Brom Academy uh, products that, um, that that scored. And then there was a, a team of coaches behind them who were all, um, <laughs> you know, former West Bromwich Albion Academy coaches. So there were goals from... I think it's Young and um, Louis Barry scored in that particular game. But yeah, it was uh, not particularly great from a West Bromwich Albion p- perspective. It was a team full of, um, full of you know, former Albion projects. And, and also, you know, a, a bench with lots of Albion players, sorry, not Albion players, with, with lots of Albion coaches, former Albion coaches on it as well. So, you know... The, the the whole Villa stole our academy thing I've been seeing on Twitter is a bit of nonsense, let's be honest. The fact that Luke Dowling came in and he, he sort of ripped up what a you know, what the you know, what the club had built in terms of academy. It used to be our, one of our strongest things. You look at the players that we've come out, um Yeah, I mean he, he sort of you know, Berahino came out of that academy got players like players who play in Premier League football now like Tyler Roberts playing Premier League football at the moment um you've got players that will probably end up playing Premier League football Morgan Rogers is another one is another one that's uh, that's gone recently I know one that left particularly 
uh, unjustly was Izzy Brown, who left. I'd be that was it was probably of his own accord to want to want to go to Chelsea, just as he was getting into the first team. Um, I mean, yeah, and uh, Morgan Rogers was a weird one that, in terms of leaving the club because he left whilst play whilst the people who were in control of his development. Uh, didn't have a clue like the coaches the the staff at the club didn't have a clue apart from Luke Dowling who sort of just let him go because he the four million would, was used to pay for Billich's wages Salvan Billich's wages but yeah he's Morgan Rogers is one of them but there's quite a few of them um, yeah I mean we'll go on to talk about it today but just a little word on that but the fact that that academy was practically virtually a lot of ours a lot of our former players in there so yeah for me it's a bit frustrating to see that I think those at Villa Park who are managing in the academy set up will be kind of laughing all the way to the bank today uh, sorry to uh, on Friday night they probably were because they're looking at them and going we've just let, let they've just let us go out of that academy uh, and you know all the staff will probably be going oh we were stripped out of that academy and now we've just beaten them in the FA Youth Cup. Be it, it's an incredible achievement. Let's talk about the lads on the pitch for a minute. The incredible achievement for them getting there, beating teams. Everton, I think Tottenham were also beaten in there. Tottenham beating quite convincingly as well. So they did very well to get there in the end. It was just unfortunate to fall short. I mean, I think Villa were quite a lot better than us. But um, uh, just a few notes on who, who was there. I think Ingram... He he's looked very good throughout this FA Youth Cup run. Don't get me wrong, but to, he didn't look too good in that game. Oreg Bun Oreg Bunham, I can't, don't know how to say his name, but in the midfield looked very good. Same with Teixeira. I've seen a lot of good things of him and Rico Richards. Need to have him in and around the first team. Maybe get him on for a couple of games next season in the Championship. There's lots of potential in there. Nobody likes seeing nobody likes seeing anything more than you know a fantastic youth product coming through even if they're not too good it's it's quite exciting for people at the club to see that there's stuff being done behind the scenes to develop local players local players who want to come and play for the Albion there's nothing gr that gives greater interest than a lot of the um a lot of Albion fans because they want to see their homegrown talents doing well but yeah that's just a little bit of a word on that I just confused as to how the entire academy setup has got to you know got to just a small group of really talented players and the rest are sort of just disappearing. But yeah, it's a bit of a shame to see that happening. But yeah, on to Liverpool. Liverpool was, uh, yeah, an interesting game. We'll start with the lineup. Why not? We always do. We, we always start with a nice little lineup here on the Baggies podcast. We'll start and just dissect the lineup, see how we sort of, I guess, I guess how we lined up. We made a few changes in goal. We had Sam Johnston and it was an unchanged back line of Furlong, Ajayi, Bartley and Townsend. Phillips in the on the right midfield position, Gallagher and Yakushlu in midfield, centre midfield, Grady D and Garner coming into the side. I think that oh, I can't remember who he played last. Uh, Arsenal, I think that was to replace uh, Robinson, and then uh, Hal Robson, Carnu and Pereira sort of arc in the front front two. Um, Robson, Carnu coming in for Diagne, who didn't get on the pitch today. Yeah, I think he's just sniffing out if Allardyce is to play. He's not going to keep Diagne, let's be honest. He's going to want too much. Uh, and probably, for me, I think he would score goals in the championship. However, I just think that it's a bit of a waste of waste of, a, waste of of time with him. I think he hasn't particularly looked interested. He won't want to play in champions. He won't want to play in the championship. And I think Allardyce here is just sort of sniffing out uh, who's going to who's going to be here next season. He knows exactly if he is going to be here, Big Sam, who's going to be playing for him. Gallagher is a reasonable target for me. I think he's one of them players that you could potentially look at and say, could you can encourage him to come and stay in the championship because I don't quite think he's good enough for Premier League level. Yukoslu, Yukushlu is, is, is one of them. You look at him and I, I personally say he's more than good enough to play Premier League football. However... If you can convince him to stay, if you can convince him that this is the place to be, we're going to go back up and you'll be able to play in the Premier League football and you'll be able to play uh, top flight football just within a season, just come down to the Championship and help us get back there because he's obviously enjoyed his time at the at the club. Let's be 
be completely honest, he, he apparently has become very settled in Birmingham as well. So, Yukuslu is one of them that you could potentially convince to stay. As for others, Dean Garner got in today. I don't. He's clearly lacking a bit of sharpness, a bit of um, bit of ability to 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 get in the game. Really, um, didn't really affect much. A bit of a passenger today. He tried a few little sk skills and flicks and stuff, but unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. Um, yeah, it was, it was disappointing from Dean Garner, but it's good to see him back out on the pitch playing. Uh, a special word for Carney in here because I thought Carney was really good. I thought the fact that he scored was like you know a bit wow that's really good from Carney. A bit embarrassing on Liverpool's front, mind you, but he the other things he did in the game were were pretty decent as well for me. I think he did a lot of good holding at the ball. Won three duels in this game. Uh, yeah, uh, where else? Uh, one. 100% of his aerial duels, so he was very good in holding at the ball. Quite a nice few, couple of turns in there, so showing a bit of technical ability for Carney. Whether he's playing for a contract because his contract's up this summer, we'll never know. But for me, Carney did a decent job uh, up front. I thought he did all he could in in in, in retrospect. I think he did did a lot of um. Yeah, I think I think he's worked worked really well it, up front there. Carney, I'm not sure that Dean Garner, Dean Diagne, sorry, is going to be here next season. So it's good to plan ahead. Good to see other players getting involved. You have got Maitland Niles who came on. He's not going to be here next season. Let's face that. He want to go back to Arsenal. Might even want to go to a Premier League team. Might even move from there. Uh, Livermore also came on. A couple of good touches. Just played really. Livermore. Don't really know what to say about him. Uh, Colin Grant. There was a couple of times where he was in on he he had chances to get himself in on goal or perhaps get make a chance for somebody and he didn't quite do so. But yeah, Kyle and Grant not too pleased with him. But it's good. I know it's not they're not going to come back in and make instant impacts. But it's nice to see players like that coming back into the fold. They haven't really had their chance under Allardyce. I think Kyle and Grant's had a few yet. Yeah, fair enough. But Dean Garner hasn't really had his chance. Um, even somebody like Harrelson Carney hasn't really had his chance uh, for me. I think there's plenty of players in there that you'd say, um, you know, haven't really been given the opportunity to express themselves and to show their ability under Big Sam. So it's nice to see them finally being able to do so. And if this is the sign of things to come, Big Sam bit staying permanently, you'll want to see them getting in the side and staying in the side and playing playing football for for us. Even in these last couple of games now, we've got West Ham Leeds net left now so we want to see a bit of a bit more of something uh, and obviously West Ham next game is, is one that a lot of you guys will be there for I personally won't be there for the game but I hope that you guys you do if, I'm sure there'll be a lot of listeners who are going to be going to the game but yeah enjoy enjoy yourselves basically is what I'm trying to say just you know enjoy the moment uh, I'm sure it'd be fantastic to have us all back in the ground soon in, in August September whenever it is but yeah a uh, yeah, enjoy yourselves. Basically, I'm sure you'll. I'm sure it'll be great to get back in the ground. Hopefully, we'll spur the guys on a bit more to put a lot. Well, I suppose they have really put in passion today. I thought it was organised. I mean, Carney scored a really nice goal to start us off with, and we think, yeah, here we go. Now we can shut them out. Salah scored a decent goal, but I think Bartley and Dean Garner got a bit confused between them and who was going to get rid of the ball and. Mane jumped in and gave it straight to Salah, who just bundled it into the back of the net. Uh, same, for, uh, but the last goal, wow. Um, we'll talk about that in a second, because there were some pretty key moments between that, and one of those being um, an offside goal. Oh, actually, no, one of them being Mo Salah's goal, because Mike Dean got in the way of the ball, and that would instigate, for me, that would be a drop ball. It's not a free kick, it's a drop ball. You chuck it on the floor and they play. Or you just throw it up in the air and they can control it and carry on. That's fair enough. If, you, if the rest gets in the way, team in possession of the ball deserve to have the ball back, but not via a free kick. But Matt Phillips, being the silly, silly boy he is, decides to lob it up back to Fabinho, who puts it straight on the floor and plays. And in the end, it does come to a goal. I mean, it's not a free kick for starters, Mike Dean. It's a, it's a drop ball. It's got to be a drop ball because... That's the letter. That's the letter of the law. You've got to give the correct decision, which is to drop the ball down on the floor and let. Yeah, I'm not again. I, I, he did get in the way. The only foul 
that's been committed for the free kick is Mike Dean getting in the way himself. So that's not something that you should punish us for particularly if we haven't been involved in in the passage of play necessarily. We weren't even near them, were we? But yeah, that was a bit of an odd one for me. Um, disappointing from Mike Dean, to be honest, uh, and a bit bit weak refereeing because you could have said, oh, hang on, it's a drop ball, not a free kick, but you didn't. Uh, we also had a disallowed goal, which was a shame. Uh, a bit of a shame there on that one, but um, yeah, we, we, we Matt Phillips has stood in the way of the goalkeeper. However, um, it was kind of like a, it was kind of a, he wasn't really in the way of the goalkeeper, but he sort of, he was he was in the eye line of the goalkeeper, but the ball and the man Carl Bartley who scored, who was onside, Matt Phillips was offside in front of the goalkeeper, but Carl Bartley came in and headed the ball from the side. So therefore Allison can see that ball coming across, he can see it, and Bartley's coming in here at the back post to my eye line where Matt Phillips is sort of not really in that way. He's in the way if that ball came straight at Allison and Matt Phillips is in the way, it's offside because he's interfering with play. However, he wasn't offside because Bartley at the back post was um was waiting to pounce. He was almost at, he was coming round the back. And that therefore he wasn't really in uh he wasn't really in Allison's eye line. But Allison ended up having a having the look the look of the rub of the green really. It's um it wasn't necessarily the fact he was it was a great header. He was let he was left alone. Um he left alone in the box and he took advantage. Fair play. It was a nice header, nice, very controlled header, but I'd just I'd just argue who was marking him. That's all I'd say is who the hell is marking the goalkeeper. Because I know you say he's the goalkeeper and you think, ah, oh, he's never gonna score, he's never gonna score, but he is six foot how tall is he? Six foot something? Uh one hundred and ninety three centimetres. I'd say that's about six foot two or three or something like that. Um but he's he's a tall guy. If you leave him alone in the box, he's gonna score, isn't he? Or if it, you know, it's a very good corner from Trent Alexander Arnold just to put it straight on Allison's head. But if you know, if nobody's marking him, of course he's of course he's gonna score. So if you're a West Brom defender, why are you just letting him just have a free pass on goal? It's a bit confusing for me, but yeah. Allegedly, um yeah, that basically gives Liverpool a bit of hope for their Champions League. So fair play to them. You know, if that's what they want, they can. You know, they more than willing to go on and do that and play a play Champions League football. And obviously, we wish them all the best for that. But it was good to see a real bit of fight from from Albion. I do have to say, a bit of fight, a bit of determination. It was really good to see. It goes a long way with supporters to see that although we've essentially given up our position in the Premier League, we haven't necessarily given up our position in terms of playing um playing Premier League football next season. I mean not sorry, the season after next. It shows that we've got a bit of ambition, shows that we're able to to keep things going and it shows that we have the ability to to potentially pick ourselves where we you know from a good position la- next season. It's all about momentum. You saw this season that we ended up start we we left the se- we left last season in a really bad way. We limped over the promotion line. Lucky I'd say I'd say lucky because we weren't good towards after the restart from COVID. We looked unfit. I think that wasn't helped because Slaven Bilic's size are notoriously unfit, but doubly unfit because you haven't been able to get in the training ground. I think it's about a month that we lost football, or a bit longer than that, perhaps. And um, but for me, I think it was a bit disappointing the way that we linked over the line. But then we carried it on to into this season, and it doesn't start you off well. If you have absolutely demolished the championship like Norwich have. You're going to go into the season with a lot of confidence. However, if you've limped over the line like West Brom did and like we did and we managed to just pop over the line and just about get ourselves in, um, then you're never going to have a have a decent, um, you're never going to have a decent run, are you? You're not going to feel great about yourselves because you're going to think, wow, we didn't really deserve this, did we? We're just here for, on, we're not really here on merit. We're just here because Brentford were really, really bad. For those and they they bottled it essentially, so yeah, that was my thinking behind it. I think you just need to end the season well. You don't necessarily have to win, but you need to put in positive performances. At the moment, it just justifies for me why Big Sam should stay because he's making us play like a Premier League side. We look like a Premier League side all over. So I would hope 
that we are um we're looking like it and I hope that we're up for next season because I don't want to see any dilly dallying about. I want to see purposeful transfer business. Uh, I don't want to see things done on the cheap. I don't want to see people coming in like Ivanovic who are just I don't want to see new I also don't want to see new contracts for players who shouldn't have them. So yeah, that's just my thoughts on really what we should be doing next season. We shouldn't we need to carry on this season with a bit of momentum because even though we've lost today, we've gone toe to toe with Liverpool. We've we we, we we haven't we haven't been beaten ferociously, we haven't been battered. We've actually been on par with them for large parts of the game. Be it they had their spells and they did look quite good for large parts of the game, but still, we deserved to we deserved to at least get a point out of that. I think in terms of chances Liverpool had, did they have many? No, I think we had quite a few. I think offside uh, from Bartley was was going to hang, you know, pretty anno annoy people. But then again, the one from and then the foul that for the for the or the drop ball that should have been for the goal for Liverpool was pretty um, undeserved as well. But yeah, I think we should have got at least a point out of the game. I thought we were decent, and we just need to keep that momentum building, and then we can hopefully continue in the championship next season, and it'll be much easier for us. In, in my opinion, I think it'll be much easier for us to to move on next season once we've got a bit of momentum behind us, once we're starting to get things going again, and if we keep going. And we've got that momentum building. We can start to have a more positive outlook on next season. Uh, and but I just think we need to get things done. We just need to get things done quite quickly. Who are we going to have as manager? Make your decision. My decision, is Sam Allardyce, personally. But if it's not going to be Allardyce, if he doesn't want to stay, if you haven't convinced him that you've got the funds, or you haven't convinced him that you've got the ability to bring us back up straight away, then that's fine. But make your decision on your manager soon, so he can get in who he thinks he's going to play, and get out who he thinks isn't going to play. Do it quickly, because you don't want to end up what's happened here where you've made a short, quick decision and you've got half and half of a squad that Allardyce doesn't want and a squad that Billich would have wanted. So, yeah, let's hope for more momentum and hope for us to kick off to next season in a better way. That brings me to the end of this week's episode of the Baggies podcast. A massive thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure having you here. Obviously, uh, very good to, very good to uh, be back again talking about West Bromwich Albion for another week and we'll be back again next week, essentially. every uh, What day is the West Ham game? Probably not Monday. Is it, is it, yeah, it's the 19th. So we'll, we'll be back again next Monday and we'll probably do... Actually, we might be even be back again in midweek and we'll do a double header of some description, hopefully, so you guys can listen to my voice. But make sure you subscribe because if I don't know what podcast... Well, when I'm putting out a podcast, then if you press subscribe, then you'll be able to find when, when it's out. It'll give you a notification. And you'll be like, oh, yeah. He, I know he said he was only doing one, but he's done two today, two this week. So we'll we'll be pleased with that. But yeah. That brings me to the end of this week's episode of the Baggies podcast, and I'll see you again in the next one. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you're following on Twitter at the Baggies pod or at Louis Bend underscore. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, Albion fans. Have a fantastic week and enjoy the game at West Ham. If you guys are going, let me know how it. Let me know how it goes. Basically, tweet me at the Baggies pod. I'd love to hear how you get on. Yeah, and uh, enjoy yourselves. Come on, you Baggies. I'll see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>